Hey everyone, before we get started, I just want to let you all know that I'm currently having a giveaway on my Patreon. Do you want to win a custom Snap Squad made by me of your choice? All you have to do is be a Patreon for your chance to win. The winner will be drawn on the 28th of April. Good luck! Hey everyone, and today I am making a Hyper Utah Raptor from the game The Isles using this Amber Collection Jurassic Park Posable Raptor. So first off, I'm moving all the joints into their full extension and then marking with a sharpie where they stop. This way I don't sculpt on areas where the parts move and seize up the joints. Now I'm re-sculpting a part of the jaw that was broken on mine. So mine when it arrived seemed like the head wasn't set on the body properly and it sort of revealed the gum below. So now I'm just re-sculpting that area back on. And I'm going to be using my good copy of the Amber Collection just to reference where the scales should go. So kind of a little repair job and I'm using two-part epoxy milliput, which is a two-part epoxy clay that sets within about two to three hours and it's really really strong. Very good clay to work with, especially for customization. So now I'm actually sculpting the Hypo Utah body parts essentially. So I'm starting off with the nose sort of additions. I believe the female and the male raptor have different parts so I'm going with the male Hypo Utah Raptor and I'm just blending the epoxy putty on to make sure it's stuck down before I shape it. So now I begin the sculpting of the back plates. So I've just rolled flat some epoxy putty and I'm just pushing it down into the neck to allow it to grip. And then I'll be pinching the center to make the center spikes, I guess you call them. Now I'm just cutting the edge sharper and then blending it a bit flatter and smoother. trying to make it easy to move between the joints. And now I'm checking the joints to make sure nothing's getting stuck before I begin sculpting all the detail. So, while I'm sculpting the detail, I think it's time for question of the day. So the first question I have here is, what is your favorite non-dinosaur related movie? This is a very hard one. I actually had to think about this question for quite a while. Um. I guess it comes down to three movies, um, How to Train Your Dragon, Robin Hood Men in Tights, and Compow. That's the top I could think of. All my favourite movies are dinosaur movies, so that one was actually really hard to answer. Okay, back to sculpting. So I'm using my silicon tools here to push around the scale shapes and the different indentations in the joints. Silicon tools are really good for sculpting with epoxy putty because nothing really sticks to silicon, so epoxy putty being sticky doesn't stick too well to the silicon. So you catch my drift here, I guess? <laughs> I'm just using my pointer tool here to sculpt in the sort of rough shapes of the scales and then I'll be coming in with a silicon tool again just to soften those scale shapes. And this is what I meant by coming in with a silicon tool to soften the shape of the scales sort of rounding the edges and making them a bit smoother. Now I'm just using my ball tool just to sort of indent some of the scales to give them a sort of a unique look from each other. Um, I don't know, sort of gives it a natural look to my eyes. 
Now I'm bringing in sort of, I guess, the crocodile sort of scales to it. Um, of course I'm referencing the whole time, and this is the scales it has at the shoulder area. And I'm sculpting them on one by one, so I'm just ball rolling up a ball of the epoxy and then sort of squeezing it into the shape and sticking it down. Then using my ball tool to blend it down. There's a whole lot of these to make. <laughs> so now I've let all the prior epoxy putty clay to set, so and I'm starting on the new stuff now. It's important when you're working with this clay to Work in small areas because you only have a small window to work on it. So I only make up a small batch at a time and I use that batch to the completion and then I'll wait for it to properly set and then I'll come in with my new batch. So now that the back plates are all done, I'm beginning on the second raptor claw. It seems to have two on the feet. So I'm making it slightly smaller than it is on the reference because I don't want to clog up the movable joints. And I've pre-made the, the actual claw part and I've let it set and now I've mixed up a new batch and I'm impressing it in and then placing it and blending it onto the actual foot itself. And I'm being very careful still to not clog up the joints. So now I am trying a new type of clay for me, which is Bacon Bend. It's apparently a clay that bends, which is the sort of thing I kind of need for the tail, because the tail on this cre this scop toy, I should say, is actually poseable and bendable. And if I put my two-part epoxy on there, it's just going to crack. Or stop the tail from actually being poseable. So what I'm doing to use this clay, since I have to bake it, is I'm putting tin foil down on the tail and I'm going to be sculpting onto the tin foil rather than the tail, because I can't bake the tail because I'll melt it. So I'm just doing the same thing that I did with the neck plates, I'm rolling it flat and then I'm pinching the center and then I'm creating a slight gap between each of the scale of uh, the tail plates just to allow for movement between the tail. And I'm just making one at the start because I want to make sure it's going to work before I commit to making the full tail of scales. You've got to test things first before you actually commit to them. And I'm using a toothbrush here just to texture it. So time to put this thing in the oven and see if it works. So it actually worked really, really well and you can see how bendable the clay is once it sets. So I'm quite happy with it. So now I'm just going to glue it down and then add tin foil to the rest of the tail and I can continue sculpting the tail. So I think it's time for second question of the day, which is where and how did you learn how to sculpt? Um, <laughs> I've actually never been taught how to sculpt. I sort of just found it as a child and decided it was something I liked and my family allowed me to just do it as a hobby and it was just something I liked to do. Um, I would have liked to have been taught by someone but I am self-taught as of at the moment. I believe there's a lot I could learn from a master. 
but yeah, I'm self-taught. I just really liked it as a child and I just did it a lot, I guess. <laughs> so all my skill is just practice and self-learn, self-taught. Um, practice, practice, practice. <laughs> So this clay, when you work with it, it's um, a lot softer than Sculpey if you're used to using um, polymer clay. Um, it's also very shiny when you bake it, so it frustrated me a li bit, little bit down the road when I was painting because it made everything that I painted onto it super glossy. Thankfully I had a matte varnish though, so that just nullified all the gloss, but just something to keep in mind if you plan on working with this stuff. It makes everything very glossy. So probably not a bad idea for teeth, if you don't want your teeth to easily be broken. Although it will make a chomp action kind of hilarious, if the teeth bend. So now that all the tail plates are baked in the oven and they've cooled down, I'm now using E6000 glue and gluing them down. I'm using E6000 because it, when it's dry, it still bends, so it's a flexible glue. So it's going to be able to bend with the tail. Very important, if you have bending rubbery parts, you want a glue that can hold onto rubber as well as still bent. If you get a glue that dries solid like super glue, it's just going to crack. It's actually kind of nice watching these tail plates go down. that's the tail plates down and now I'm beginning with a ready brown to commence the painting. I'm not base coating this time because I want to keep the brown tones it already has and work with them. Um, the surface is already rough and I've sprayed it in a coat of Mr. Super Clear so the paint should grip on it just fine. So yes I'm starting with a citadel sort of a ready brown to create the ready tone undertone that the Hyper Utah has. So now I'm coming in with a black from Citadel and I'm creating the darker tones that the scales have. So you're probably wondering if you're an expert painter why I'm going in straight with black. I'm Well this black sort of allows the brown to come through underneath so even though I'm painting with a, a solid black the brown tones are still coming through if that makes sense. I like to make colours come through underneath each other, that's sort of how I work. So I'm, yeah, I'm relying on the brown underneath to come through the black, or translate through the black to make my blacky brown, or next, close to black brown. I think I'm rambling. <laughs> and I'm just very lightly touching the spotted areas because they're sort of faded spots. Some are dark, some are faded. And of course when the solid colours meet an edge of the colour, I dry brush it because I want to keep that natural look rather than a straight edge. Mm -hmm. 
And of course, very important, I am referencing the whole time. References are very important. So now I've started on the legs. Um, with this guy, because he's got so many moving parts, every time I've decided to take a break and let the paint dry, I'm sealing, once the paint dries, I'm sealing in a coat of Mr. Super Clear, just to protect the joints and stop the paint from chipping off. So he probably has about three coats of Mr. Super Clear so far. And of course I'm overextending the joints when I paint just to make sure I get the paint in the full gaps of the area or the full joints. So here I'm painting in some tail stripes and I'm sort of putting the the most of the paint on the tail and then I'm letting it dry brush down into the stripe so it gets that sort of faded stripe effect. And of course I'm not covering the tail completely because there is some red tones that shine through on the back scales. It's sort of a marbly sort of effect. Now I'm coming in with a Citadel wash and I'm covering the whole piece in the Citadel wash. Now one thing I learnt with the Citadel wash is if you don't let it dry fully when you spray it with Mr. Super Clear or the other way around, they actually create a sort of white scarring effect, which is quite cool, but not what I wanted on this guy. So <laughs> I learnt from my mistake and I had to repaint a couple of areas because it had like a scarring effect on it. But yeah, little note for anyone else wanting to try this. Now I'm painting the eyes and actually come in with two tones of green and then I paint this little slit tool. Uh, this little slit pupil. <laughs> now to start the base, so I'm actually using the Amber Collections base that it comes with because I have an idea for it. And the box itself is just like a little desk paper box I guess you can call it. So I've sketched around the Amber shape and now I've chopped off the area that doesn't fit on the box. And now I'm not going to glue it down even though I put glue down <laughs> because I have a plan and I jumped ahead of myself. So now I'm coming in with some diffusing foam because I want to diffuse the lights that I'm going to use. So yes, this thing is going to light up. So I've traced around the shape and now I'm making sure it fits into the amber. And now I'm making my gluing my lights down. So these are just LED lights. Sort of fairy lights, I guess you can call them. And I'm trying to make sure they're evenly spread out. And then I'm using tin foil as a backing just to help the lights reflect even more. Now I'm gluing it down. Now I'm coming in with my two part epoxy and I'm actually sculpting the environment now. And I've got like a fake plant that I'll be using as a shrub, or shrubbery as I guess you could call it. And I'm using my knife and scraping it on the edge just to make sure it has a very clean edge with the box. And I'm using water to smooth it all down. And I'm being very careful with the water not to touch any of the electrical equipment. Very important, you don't want to kill your lights after you've installed them because that will be very, very hard to fix. I know from experience.
So now I'm coming in with some crushed tin foil and I'm impressing it in to create a sort of natural ground effect. Now I'm painting a grey tone of Citadel, from Citadel I should say. I'm trying to make the amber make sense so I'm making it look like it's embedded in a rock that the raptor is running on. Rock or cliff face I guess. Now I'm doing a green wash over the tree to kind of bring out some more tones in it to make it look a bit more real. Now I'm doing a brown wash over the whole base and including the bottom of the tree. I want it to bring some more layers to the tree. And I got rid of the Jurassic Park logo using um, nail polish remover or acetone. So now I'm using Mod Podge and I'm dabbing it in small selective areas just to glue down my gravel. Now I'm coming in with Liquitex High Gloss Varnish and I'm glossing up the black area of the box. And I've sealed the scenery part of the box in Mr. Super Clear Matte Varnish. And that's the box all glossed up and ready for its plaque. And there we have it. The Hypo Utah Raptor from the game The Isles is complete. And yes, it is still fully poseable, completely works, and the box lights up beautifully. I'm very happy with this piece. So this guy is a trophy for an Isla Nublar event. It will be a Legions event held on the 28th of April 2020 for anyone in the USA or the 29th for Australian people. You don't have to be from America or Australia. I'm just trying to give people a general idea of the date that the event will be held on. For more information, keep an eye on the Isla Nublar Discord and and yeah, good luck to everyone. Bye.